Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Today I want to take a look at a design pattern called the Model View Presenter. It's not my favorite design pattern, but it is one you see a lot in iOS applications and it is good to kind of know how this thing works. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at how the MVP works, what the mechanics are, and how to actually implement one instance of it in iOS. The Model View Presenter is the design pattern that breaks your design up into three distinct elements a model, a presenter, and a view. The presenter acts as the coordinator or the mediator between the model and the view. The model is like your business objects or how you represent business in your application. The view is gonna be your view or your view controller, how you display it, and the presenter translates and handle interactions between these two worlds. Let's take a look at the model. The model is your external representation of data in your application. It knows nothing about UIKit, Cocoa, or anything to do with the UI. It's purely your business objects, and this would be typically what you would translate an HTTP JSON request into and how you'd represent business objects in your application. The view is how your data gets displayed. This is your views, your view controllers, all that good stuff we love in iOS. This is the actual implementation of how we would display that in our iOS app. The presenter then acts as the coordinator. It handles interactions coming out of our view and it helps translate that into our model. Likewise, we go back in the other direction. We take interactions with our model and use those to update the view. This is where we typically place our non-UI or business logic. It knows nothing about the underlying UI. It's completely agnostic and it purely mediates or translates between the model, the view, and connects these two worlds. Now the implementation we're gonna take a look at in iOS adds a couple layers of abstraction in here. We're gonna create a protocol called the presenter view, which is how the presenter is gonna to talk to our view without knowing anything about its underlying detail. And we're also gonna translate our model data into view data. This is data specifically for our view, and we're gonna take a look and see how the presenter helps translate and mediate between these two worlds. Okay, so in this example, I'm gonna show you the simplest form of the model view presenter uh, we can possibly have. This isn't exactly very practical, but we'll just show you the mechanics and you'll get to see how this works. So in this app, all I have is a app at the start button. When I hit the start button, it changes the background. It does some processing, it changes the label. Let's just take a look and see now what goes on behind the scenes in order to make this happen. So model view presenter, we start with the model. This model is our application data specific to our app. In this case, it's a game. Maybe this came from a JSON request. But all I know is that I want to represent a game in my app like this. I'm not sure how I'm going to display it yet, but this is just how we're going to represent it, a simple struct with three attributes. Then there's the view. In iOS, the view is view and view controllers. This is one of the things that is a little bit confusing about Model View Presenter. It does actually include these view controllers because in iOS, our views often are our view controllers. So here, one thing you're going to note is we have something called game view data. This is what the presenter is going to do for us. It's going to take our game, which came from the outside world, and translate that into a specific model for our view. In that case, I've called it game view data. Then here's our view. It's our view controller. We simply have a button and a label sitting at the center, and that's all there is to it. And the target action on the button is called start game. And here's where you'll see the presenter coming in. When we create our view, I've created something called a presenter here, which is going to pass this view as itself to the presenter. You'll see why in a second. And then note that when we hit this button, start game, we're not going to actually do the work in the view ourselves. We're going to delegate or pass that off to the presenter through a method called start game. And we're going to let it handle that interaction and decide what that actually means to start a game. So now here's the presenter. This is our mediator between the model and the view. And here you can see when we pass ourselves in as our view controller, we're actually implementing a protocol here or representing that view controller as a presenter view. And this is the key thing with model view presenter. It doesn't know anything about UI view controllers or views. It's completely agnostic. So mechanically, the way we do that in iOS is we create a protocol called the presenter view and we make our view controller implement that. So now our presenter can talk back to the view without knowing the underlying details, and it can ask it to do its work. 
So when start game is called or delegated from the view to the presenter and it gets that request, it can take that game, it can create a specific game view data and then talk back to the view and say, hey, can you update yourself? And here's the mechanics behind how all that happens. Here's our protocol called presenter view, which our view controller implements. That's what enables the presenter to call update game back to the view controller. Of course, it will take that specific view data and now do something interesting in the view. In this case, change the label and change the background to yellow. So that's kind of it. That's the simplest form of a model view presenter we can do. Let's look at a slightly more complex one now. Okay, so this example is still pretty simple, but it's a little bit more complex than the previous one. Here we have a table, which is just gonna display some users. And if we have users, we're gonna display the table like that with some rows uh, representing the username and age. And in the event that we don't have any data, in other words, if our users are nil, which I'm gonna represent by just blanking these out, then we'll get a table or a back screen of red, just indicating there's no users. It doesn't really make any sense. It's kind of a simple, dumb app, but it's just gonna show you the mechanics of something slightly more complex on what model view presenter can do. Okay, so going through this example, let's just start by taking a look at the model. So here is our model. It's a user with uh, three attributes. This is how we're representing data in our app. This could have come from a JSON request. And in this case, we're mimicking that with this user service. So this is a fake service that, well, it would go out and actually get the users by making a remote uh, call to a server. And in this case, we're getting back three users. And then we just have a simple timer here to simulate an asynchronous call and then displaying that in the table. That's our model. And here is our view. It's a view controller. And in there, we do all of our good view controller stuff. In this case, it's just a very simple table. But note here how we create our user presenter. And here we can pass in our service. So this could be our service doing the HTTP call. We're also passing in ourself as our user view. And there's not really much to see in the view here. Really where the interesting things happen afterwards is down here. In our view controller, we implement this presenter specific view so that the presenter can talk to us. Here that protocol is called user view. And here what we're really gonna do is there's gonna be some logic somewhere that's gonna decide depending upon how many users we have, either show a table by setting users equal to the data for that table or change our background red. Now, normally we could totally do that within our view controller here. That'd be a simple if statement, but because we're doing model view presenter, we're gonna pull that logic out and we're gonna do it here in something called our user presenter. So here you can see we have some data specific for this view. <clears throat> the presenter is gonna help translate. Here is our protocol for user view. This is what our view controller is gonna implement so our presenter can speak back to it. And when we actually do the load and we load these users, this is the logic that's gonna get executed. So get users is actually called up here in the view controller when the view controller loads. On view did load, it's gonna to delegate to our presenter and say, hey, can you decide whether or not we should display the full table or the red background? And this is where we've extracted our business logic to. So it's in the presenter that it calls the service to get the users. And then depending upon the count, whether there are users or not, it will set empty users, talking back to the view controller through this user view protocol we defined. Or if there is data, here's where it's gonna do some work. In this case, it's gonna translate between the model data coming in and the view specific data that it wants to display. That's something that a view presenter can do for us. And when it finally gets that, it can set the users in the view controller through the view and you get what's on your screen here. So a slightly more interesting example, still not really demonstrating the full value and potential behind the pattern. But one thing that also does is it lets you write some unit tests. So model view presenter is really nice because it can separate concerns. It does enable you to separate your UI from your business logic and write specific sets of tests for each. There's some pros and cons to that, which we'll talk about, but the unit test for this uh, doesn't look too bad. So here we can have a uh, MVP set of user tests. We can create a 
as you can see, some mocks for our various views. And the way we set these up is here we have an empty service mock. This is the service that's going to return nothing. Here's a service that returns two users, and we can write tests to verify that certain things get called in our presenter. So looking at the should set users first, here we can create a user presenter, passing in our two user service mock along with our user view. Now note in this case, we actually aren't speaking UIKit or Cocoa at all. Again, that's really the underlying principle of MVP. It knows nothing about UIKit or Cocoa. At least typically that's how most people like to implement it. So our user view mock here is simply a mock. It is a class that we can create down here that basically just will track whether certain methods are called. So when we call set users on our user view mock, which would normally represent our view controller, all we're going to do here is track, hey, did this method get called or did this method get called? Was it set users or set empty users? That's all we're going to do in this test. And then we have a fake service here, which can actually return either the real stuff, uh, two users or an empty set. So in the case where we should set the users, we can set up our presenter to pass in our two service mock along with our user view mock, which is going to track which methods get called. We can then call get users and of course just see whether or not that Boolean was set when we call uh, set users down here. And in the case where it's empty, we can set up the same presenter passing at a different mock. In this case, it's going to be an empty service mock. This is the one that's going to return no users. And again, we can call the presenter, get users, and verify and see whether the empty one gets called by just asserting that true here. So you'll note there is nothing about UI kit in here. It's a very business logic separation of concerns style of unit test. That's just one thing you can do with the MVP, this style of unit testing. So what are some of the pros and cons of MVP? Well, some of the pros are it does separate concerns. It does let you separate the UI from the business logic, uh, have a mediator, that presenter that you can uh, write tests about, and it will increase your testability in an application. So those are some of the pros. What are some of the cons? Well, if you like working a little bit closer to the metal and you like UIKit, you like Cocoa, and you like writing tests and working with the mechanics of that, it can be a bit of an impedance mismatch. Remember, the presenter knows nothing about UIKit or Cocoa. So if your design or application uses a lot of uh, responder chain, KVO, target action, or communication patterns very native to UIKit and Cocoa, uh, you can't really test those well in the presenter. It's going to put that layer of indirection in there. It's not going to give you access to those things. And depending upon how you architect your app, that can be quite frustrating. Also, there's more layers of indirection here. So there is some increased, increased complexity. You saw we had uh, view-specific data. We have the presenter. We have uh, protocols representing the view. Those are okay, but it can get a little bit confusing if you have a lot of these going on in your application. So you really want to keep it simple. You really want to keep these things clearly named and uh, specific, and hopefully that'll help remove some of the ambiguity. Overall, it's not my favorite pattern for taking really large view controllers and breaking them up into smaller ones, which is really what we're trying to do here. We're trying to deal with complexity. I think there are some other ways I would start by doing this uh, before reaching for MVP. And we're going to look, take a look at some of those in some upcoming episodes. We're going to take a look at how you can extract views, how you can make use of view models, and just use simple gang of four patterns like the mediator, which is all the presenter is, but uh, still have access and still make use of some of those UI kit and Cocoa patterns in our tests and our design. So overall, not a bad pattern, just not necessarily my favorite. Okay, so there you have it, a simple introduction to MVP. Do come back. We are going to take a look at some other strategies for breaking up large view controllers. This is just the first in the series, and I wanted you to see this one first so we can compare and contrast that with some other ones we're going to take a look at in upcoming episodes. Okay, thanks for coming, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.